I still have uh, foot IK. However, you can see that my gun is absolutely glued to the screen. Either if I go on stairs or I end up on a very uneven space, you can see my camera going up and down based on my legs and pelvis being translated. It's all very fluent and it doesn't break my first person experience. Hello and welcome to the next episode of AGR Pro Tutorials. In this episode I will go through some of the minor changes I've done to the project in the and to the recent version which is uh, 2.1.1 um, and certain improvements to the entire graph and uh, flow of the entire gameplay. So first of all for now I've decided not to use um, landing animations at all because they were uh, a bit annoying when it comes down to gameplay and uh, giving too much of a camera uh, shake on first person. Um, second of all, we made some minor changes to the animation graph. So um, first of all, in our main graph, it looks now like this. So first of all, we go through the poses, nothing changed here. First the base pose, then the overlay pose. Then we go through the montages, the upper and lower body being blended together. Then we go through the slot, full body, uh, which is still using aim offset, and this is, this is the full body slot. Then we go through the leg IK node, which uh, works for legs only. So this is uh, moving foot left to IK foot L, and foot R to IK foot R. Now, why we are doing this is because uh, some of the blend spaces of walking, running, and stuff like that can have um, very disjointed, um, feel of how legs are moving and the IK legs are usually blended um, a lot better because they are not uh, relying on parent bones uh, location and translation. So then we do this and then we do the final montage saving pose. And now we've done something new, which is the Power IK Grounded. Power IK is a free plugin that I use in almost every project I uh, ever work with. So for this power IK, we are using this uh, final montage in two paths. One is for first person view, one is for third person view. And because the first person variable is not being replicated, that means that if we go into first person, only the local player will, will use this setup, while the remote players will see this setup. So first of all, we are uh, obviously uh, ignoring grounded IK if we are in error. Uh, then what we do here is we, for first person, apply inertia to body with the maximum smoothness factor of 100. Uh, and we are moving foot L, R, and our character root is pelvis, which is like the center of mass root. So the bone structure root that is going to be moved, not the actual root root. Um, Okay, so we're moving those two bones. Our delta smoothness of IK is being lowered from 200 to only 100. Our ground collision channel for this setup, I haven't used a custom channel. I just used camera channel because this is a channel that both my capsule and my mesh absolutely ignore. Uh, my capsule also ignores visibility, but my mesh blocks visibility. So I ended up using a camera as the uh, collision channel. The ray up goes only 45 and down only 75. Uh, we also changed some stuff to the ground pose. So here we are using a uh, ground slope and we have a very small leaning, uh, uphill and downhill leaning. And then we have counter lean bone being spied, uh, spine 03, which is the last uh, bone before our hands and head, which is important for our IK system. So whenever we do leaning, we do counter leaning as well. We also move the root bone. Here is the setup. We of course rotate foot to the ground uh, and Foot offset is minus one. I don't think we even need this. Uh, yeah, let's do minus one as it was, it's fine. Okay, so this is the setup. 
uh, there's also bend direction limit for calf L, which is just left knee, is Y1. And it doesn't matter if you set 1, 2, 3 or 5, it's just a direction vector, normalized. So it's 1. For right one, it's minus 1. Um, we don't do any joint limits, however we probably should. And then, uh, that's the entire setup. The difference in this setup is mostly here that our inertia to body is no longer doesn't have smooth factor because we are using springing our spring strength is 100 so maximum damping is 0.2 and then foot l r are the same setup uh, delta smooth uh, speed is 200 so the stock one you might want to improve it to 300 if your character acts strange on stairs but generally this helps solve any uh, strange behavior in third person on stairs. Uh, still camera 4575, nothing special here, same leaning, counter leaning, uh, same uh, joint uh, bent direction for knees and iteration uh, I also changed to 6, so it's 666 and I think it's the same here, oh no it's 663, I should probably bump it up to 6 as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's it. That's the entire setup for Power IK and how it looks like. Let me show you. So the character now will adjust his feet to the ground properly. So if I stand on those stairs, he will adjust. If I stand on a slope, he will do the same and he will try to keep his knees bended in the correct way and bends his foot properly. I can even step on something that is very uneven like this, this thing here. And I can stand in a way that one foot will be higher than the other. Yeah, it works pretty fluent. So that works pretty well. It works for both poses. Okay. Okay, and for first person, if I go here, I still have a foot IK. However, you can see that my gun is absolutely glued to the screen either if I go on stairs or I end up on a very uneven space. You can see my camera going up and down based on my legs and pelvis being translated. It's all very fluent and it doesn't break my first person experience. Now, if I go into third person, you can see that on stairs, for example, uh, my character doesn't do this shaky teleport thing no more, but he actually runs pretty fluent on the stairs, uh, which is all thanks to Power IK. Okay, so we go back here. We're doing this Power IK stuff uh, before the aim offset. So we're doing IK aim offset later on. And apparently it still works, even though we made some translation changes to all those bones because of how we are managing virtual bones. So the head is always the lead. I also changed the subgraph. Uh, let me find it. And the blend method for the hand cannon overlay. So now in this layer blend per bone, I do again IK hand root with blend depth of zero, which is super important. Then I do blend of spine zero one. It previously was four, but now I do seven. And if I leave it at this, this is my result. So my hands are not fully blended. My head is not fully blended and everything is a mess. However, because my IK bones are blended perfectly, I will still get this hands correction and my fingertips and my hands in general are well blended. But I also blend head with blend depth of zero, which is an absolute perfect blend. And this blends perfectly 
the virtual bone that leads the weapon. So thanks to those two things, so the uh, IK hand root and head, I have perfect blend of the weapon and with this I have better blend of the spine. So thanks to this, now if I go into three, you can see that I am no longer getting my spine um, so stiff as it would normally be with the pose previously. If I'm, even if I eject, like the character is a bit tilted to the base pose that he has instead of taking the absolute spine position of the overlay uh, pose. So this is the normal rifle and this is with the gun. So it's, it's not that much different, which is actually what I was aiming at. And that's just this small change. Uh, getting back here, aim offset. In the aim offset, there's just one small change. We kicked off one of the leg IK nodes because it's now in the main graph here for the legs. And here we are still doing copy bone of the uh, IK handgun being copied over to uh, virtual bone gun. And then we are using leg IK on hands, which uses the perfectly blended zero depth uh, IK bones of the IK hand R and IK hand L. And nothing more is happening here. Oh, and we are ignoring this IK if we have aim offset type look. So if I go here and I press one, and I have this unarmed pose, now I'm using aim offset without any IK for the hands. I'm still doing IK for the legs, but no longer for the hands because there's no need to use this IK for the hands. So there's that. Because otherwise, if I don't do that, if I just leave alpha as one, and I would go back here and press one, now see that my hands are acting a bit weird at some moments you see like and especially if I look around while running this will happen like it can't get any more weird than that <laughs> so that's why I've made this So in unarmed, now I run normally and I look around normally, but if I go into any aim pose, I am doing this IK. So it's basically saying uh, I could even make it a parameter and I could set it by something different than this. But for my particular um, use case, uh, this is enough for me. But I could make it a variable here, expose it and set it uh, in here directly. Uh, by some other variable that I would calculate by hand in our event graph. So after the same offset, we just use this another slot, the default slot. So if we play animation montage that looks really weird, that means we forgot to change the slot and it is playing here, overwriting absolutely everything, including the aim offset. So this is for animations that we want to be an absolute animation that is one-to-one -one ignoring everything beneath it. So with everything set up, this FPP uh, template is working pretty well. Like the core anime graph is not so bad and it's super easy to set up new animations. And uh, the setup of the subgraphs is even simpler because this is just input pose, hand cannon, and here we just have on the ground, inner, and on the ground we have just sprinting and not sprinting and nothing more. Oh, and of course in first person or third person we can still uh, do the fire montage, which is additive and it works with aim offset and everything. Okay, ADS with IK that we did set up. And because the animations are additive, they work while the IK is doing its job as well. So I can shoot with the gun tilted. I can also reload and reloading is ignoring my uh, IK. 
Okay, yeah, and it goes back. Okay. So that's it. From this point, we're going forward and we're going to do just two more little things in this video. One will be blocking of weapon when we're close to an object. And the second will be adding a melee weapon. So I can show you how you can make a Mordhaus style, chivalry style uh, game out of this template.